good everybody it's reed and welcome back to another video today we are going over a change changes and shifts and that sort of thing are some of my favorites this is a change i guess it's more of a switch it's called a change though the top change funny story about this i actually hated the top change i thought it was useless i thought who would ever use this move there are different ways there are better ways it's not very invisible like people will easily see this and i just thought it was the stupidest move and i never knew why anyone used the top change and i would never use the top change for years you know i kept coming back to it wondering why do people love this move so much and then i figured it out i feel like people love this move because it's it's an easy move it's not the easiest move to do well but once you can do it it's it's got a lot of applications that are easy and it doesn't take a lot of these slights and it's good on angles and then i started basically to find an application for it in my own street magic specifically there's one application for it that i don't have any other slights that can really do and that's why i started to work on the top change and then started to realize the power of the top change with this specific move so that is what i'm going to try to show you guys today explain to you that application and explain to you the top change in detail. I'm gonna to try to make this easy because I know for whatever reason, the top change is hard to learn. I think I found it hard to learn and to get it uh, invisible. Um, thanks again to all the new subscribers. Thanks for everyone for joining, for liking the videos, you know, all, all the comments. I, I really welcome comments. I love chatting with everyone and all that sort of thing. Keep in mind, I do teach magic uh if you're interested just send me an email and we'll set up a, like a zoom call uh, no matter what your skill level is even if you just want to talk magic like i love it i uh love to teach if you want to learn some new slides or you're having trouble with anything if you want to take your magic to the next level you know i do teach so just check out the description send me an email and we can set up a free kind of trial lesson anyway with all that said let's hop into the top change quick example of the top change we'll just take the three of diamonds I'll move the box here. Just like that, the card has actually changed into the eight of hearts. So a quick exposure for the top change. We'll take the nine of diamonds. Now it's a three of diamonds. All right, it's so time to break down the top change. It's really easy mechanics wise, but I'd say it's hard to make invisible. So all that's happening is you're pushing over the thumb, putting the card in your hand under the thumb, taking the card underneath out with the fingers while pulling the top card on top with the thumb. So if you do this, you kind of start to be able to not tell if I'm switching the card or not, right? That's when you know you're getting good at the top change, when you can do that really quickly, right? And that's a, this is a good practice exercise because you, you can kind of almost not really tell if I'm switching the card or not. I am switching the card for the record. But that's a good idea for practice. Just hold the thumb out here and just keep switching this card because this is the basic motion so you're holding the card by the bottom right corner essentially right you're showing it like this then you're going to kill the wrist and push off this card with the thumb you don't want to do this face up and show that right and this happens as the hands come together the problem with the top change is it's hard to cover and it needs a justification essentially so the main way to cover it as best you can is to kill the wrist, push the card off, bring the hands together, and basically all you're doing is you're shoving this card under the thumb, the fingers underneath are gonna grab this card, and then you're just switching them like that, okay? That's, that's what the top change is. So from the back, the wrist gets killed, this card comes underneath the thumb. Basically, you can pinch between the thumb and the middle finger, and if you pull, but you add pressure with the, the thumb, you can just pull the bottom card out, and then this thumb will retract that card on top. Okay, so that's, that's really all the mechanics are. The, the fun part of this move, and the interesting part, is how to, how to cover it. So to cover it, like, just from a visual perspective, like if someone was staring at your hands, you just kill the wrist as you bring the hands together, and then you'll kind of get cover, like you can't see the card in my left hand at all. And then as you bring the hands back down, that's when the switch happens, right? So this, it makes it, yes, totally invisible. The problem is it makes a noise, okay? You can, you can cut down the noise by practicing. You can make it basically silent. The biggest problem is people see this motion and it just looks kind of weird. Like people can see that a change is happening if someone is looking right at you. Like 
Not that they can see it, but they can sense something happened, is what I should have said. People can sense something goes on when this sort of thing happens. So it's your job to kind of uh, uh, make this more invisible. And that's where these subtleties on the top change will really come in handy. So the first thing that I like to do is a little bit of a sway from side to side when I do the top change. So I'll start leaning a bit to the left. I'll have the card and as I come to the other side, very subtly is when I'll do the change, right? So you obviously wanna wait until you're kinda here so you can kill the wrist and do the change. But if you do it in one fluid motion, it, that's like such good cover, just this little kind of sway. You can kind of see how, right, if you're showing the card here and then you come here and then you keep talking or whatever, and now you've done the switch. So that is one of my favorite ways to cover it. And all you need for justification is talk to someone over here and then kind of sway your body to talk to someone over here. Or if you're performing for one person, you just kind of gesture over here, you know, three diamonds. And then as you turn, you know, you point at the box, whatever you gotta do, and you've done the switch. So that's one of my favorite ways, and I almost always do the top change with a bit of a, a side to side sway. You know, you're not just going like this, but it's just super natural, and you just kind of come in like that, and you can see how smooth that looks. Another thing that I combine with this is pointing. So you come, you do the switch, and then you point, keeping the card concealed, obviously, if you've done the switch but you come and you just say, what were you saying? So this really gives that justification of why you're turning your body, right? Because you're turning to point and in that motion you've done the switch. That's, that, these are one of my favorite ways to cover the top chain. And this is usually how I do it the most, you know? Yeah, 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 blah, 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 blah. Yeah, what were you saying over here? And then you, you've done that switch and it's super good. One little subtle idea is, is to make sure before you do the chains, show that card one last time. So if you're facing this way, because you're going to do the turning method, show that card and you say, so this was your card, right? Perfect, so now I need you to choose a card. And you see how, how nicely that looks like. So yeah, you had the nine of diamonds and now can you choose a card for me? And you see how that totally flows. It's so justified between the, the showing, the sway, the, the pointing, it's all totally covered and it totally makes the top change invisible. You know, it's a good idea to do the top change and then have these hands far apart again, right? We don't want them to ha have this memory in their head of the hands being close together for a while. So if they see their card, the queen of hearts, and the hands are far apart, and they come together and then they're far apart again, you kind of don't even remember that my hands came together, yet the switch has still been executed. Um, another idea is once you've done the switch, now their card is here. So if you want to add a subtle convincer that you haven't done a switch, you can drop this card on top and do a double lift and you say, okay, still your card and then you're good to go. So that that is useful if someone gets a little fishy, right? If you do the three diamonds, let's say you don't mess up, but let's say, you know, you do the switch and you see someone grilling your hands. If you throw the card on top and then you come and you do a double, then that will convince them once again that, okay, he didn't do anything. It's still my card on top, but really you've already done the switch. So then you can make something pretty cool happen. In terms of body language, obviously, like I say all the time, natural, casual, but casual is important with this. You wanna be loose when you do the switch and it's good if you kind of bring the hands or making big motion and as they come together, you do the switch. It's kind of that big motion covers a smaller motion, which is really helpful with this. So if you're talking or making big gestures and then when the hands come together, the switch is executed. And that's another great kind of idea if you don't have a total justification to kind of be turning your body. So being casual is super important. Now make sure you keep your eyes up, of course. This is super, super important because with this switch, we need to draw attention away from the hands. We need to. Because it's one of those switches that it's not the best covered, right? Like, yeah, it's kind of invisible if we do this, but again, it's still that action that's weird. Right? So we cover that by keeping our eyes up. We're engaging people. I always have a line of patter. Like I'm always talking when I execute the top change. You know, in one routine, I'll give you an example. I have a trick where I have one spectator sign a card and then I need another spectator sign the card. But I also need to get uh, this card switched. Instead of, you know, having them pick a card, sign it, and then turning to this spectator, having them pick a card, sign it. As I turn from this spectator to this spectator, and as I say, oh, I need you to pick a card now, I point to them and I'm looking everyone in the eyes, right? I'm looking them in the eyes, I say, okay, perfect, I turn, okay, now I need you to sign a card. So my eyes are up, they're not looking at my hands, so no one else is looking at my hands because I'm engaging everyone. So you keep your eyes up, um, 
don't look down, you know, make that eye contact and have a patter point, have something to talk about and that'll keep people engaged and away from your hand. You know, the top change is great to be done in a non-moment. So what I mean by a non-moment, maybe you've just done a reveal, right? They see the three of diamonds, now they're taking it in and you do the top change to get ready for the second phase. Um, maybe someone else is signing a card while well, you do a top change over here. Uh, maybe you're actually engaging in, a, in a, a conversation in the middle of a trick because something came up and then you can just do the top change in that moment. So in terms of uses and ideas, my favorite use for the top change and the reason I started doing it is for this reason right here. I have a lot of tricks where I do a switch and obviously one of the strongest switches we can do is a switch with a double, right? It's one of the most practical and easy to do. Now, the one thing that I do a lot is I have spectators name cards rather than having them pick one. So I give them a fully free choice. So let's say they choose that, right? Now I'm in the position where I wanna do a switch, but I don't have a double under this card. In a table situation, I have great moves to load a card on top of this that I use all the time. In street, it's more difficult because you don't have a table and I don't have some of those actions that I need. The top change is great for that. So it's great for loading another card on top of the spectator's card. So essentially load it into a double. So what you do is in a non-moment, you do the top change. They think this is their card. They can see you drop it right on top and then you flip it as another convincer. But in all of that, you've loaded another card behind it. So it's really good because even if someone catches you and they think you've done something, you just throw the card on top, like I mentioned earlier, and you flip it and say, no, it's still your card. And now you've just loaded another card underneath. You can come here, do your double, double convincers, and then you have a fantastic switch, you know, whatever you want to do, and the card is back. So I use this to load the card for switches all the time. I use this a lot in like a transposition effect, right? I'll come put their card on top and then I'll say, all right, so I'll just take these two cards, right? And I'll take your queen, we'll put it on top, we'll put it there, jack here, and then all of a sudden their queen is back in my hand, that sort of that sort of idea. So that's where I really found a love for the top changes in street performing to load a card underneath a freely selected card because it's so powerful because they've handled the card. They know it's one card. So to be able to load that card underneath is super strong. All right, guys, that is the top change. You know, it's actually a, a very useful move. For me, I really only use it for that one scenario I talked about in the uses and other ideas, but it's so good just for that reason. Um, you know, using that idea of showing their card, having you put it on top and then showing it again but really you've just loaded it another card underneath is so powerful. And that's what I mainly use a top change for. But it is great just doing a switch uh, on its own, you know? Um, I mean, I could totally just take their card, do a top change and hand the card to them. But I just like having that one more convincer of throwing the card on top, showing it, and then using, you know, kind of a double lift sort of change because I think doing this is just a lot stronger than coming and doing a little kind of a weird action and then handing the card personally. And also when you have a double and you do a change, you can do it in the hands away from the deck, which I do all the time too. So just another reason why I love to do it that way. So top change, super great. Practice that move, you know, practice the timing, practice your justifications for doing the top change because all together and done right, it can be super strong. So uh, it is a bit knacky, but again, you're just pushing off with the thumb putting the one card on underneath the thumb and pulling the other card uh, on the bottom while replacing this card on top. So it's not too bad. With all that said, please like, don't forget to subscribe and I will catch you in the next video.